continue, we'll continue our discussion about Horeki. What's the draw? Is it the culture? Is it the people? Is it the land? What is it? First thing we'd, I'd like to say is I'm the Elani from OPEC with the agency, brokered by EXP, and I have my companion right here, Sharon Schleiss. <laughs> Together we are bringing you the culture of Hawaii. And you recommended that we start with the explanation a little bit more about Aloha. Aloha is an interesting word. You know, we talked about last time that alo yes. means life Correct. and light and ha means breath. So basically when you say aloha to someone, you're breathing life into them. And so you also have another uh, definition of aloha. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, people think aloha only means love. But you know what? In reality, Aloha also means hello and goodbye. Because there was there is only thirteen letters actually let me rephrase that. There are only thirteen letters in the Hawaiian language. The Hawaiians had to take and make every letter count. So you'll find multiple situations where one word such as aloha will mean uh -huh. many things. So keep in mind it means hello, it means goodbye, and it also means love. In addition to breathing life with each other. Okay. <laughs> there are many more examples, and we'll get to them as we go along. Right. In the meantime, what else is the draw for people to come to Hawaii? Well, let's go talk about the mana. Ah, oh, yes. You know, that's a common word, mana, M-A-N-A, -A, but yet it has so much depth. What does mana mean? Mana means your spiritual strength. Mana means whatever you believe in, whether you're Catholic or Jewish or, or nondescript, whatever it is soul and spirit to you. That is mana. So when we talk about mana in our culture, we talk about aloha because of sharing the breath of life. We talk about the blessings from our ancestors because without our ancestors, none of us would be here today, right? Common logic, do the science, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but mana has so much depth that when someone says, oh, I'm going to share my mana with you, that means they really like you. You're really somebody important to them. Otherwise, it's not freely given. In the old days, the days of my parents and my grandparents and before them, our kupunas did not share their knowledge, did not share their mana with anyone outside the family. And that was because that's how sacred mana is held. You don't just freely give it away. We're blessed nowadays that mana is much more freely given, that all you have to do is feel kinship with someone and feel that the mana that you're going to share is going to be held. And they will share that any of us, well, maybe some of the elders may not, but we're getting better because we're <laughs> noticing that as the elders pass on, yes. parts of the culture of the mana, right, it okay. passed with them. So nowadays, so that's what kupuna means, right? It's yes, the, kupuna. The elders. The elders. The grandmas. Grandmas. Grandpas and the wise, the wise people. Yeah. Oh, here's a cute little story. My my son and his family. My son and his family are live in South Carolina, and they live in a nice neighborhood. Everybody knows everybody. The kids know everybody. The adults know everybody. Next door neighbor is happened to be outside doing her gardening, and I was coming to take the kids somewhere. And she looks up and she goes, "Oh, hi, Tutu." Everybody calls me Tutu because the grandkids call me Tutu. <laughs> Tutu means grandma. And they call me Tutu so that my son, my daughter-in-law's mother is called Grandma. Oh. Then the kids can tell the difference. That's Tutu and Grandma. So when she said hi, Tutu, I was like taking her back because we're the same age and she's calling me Tutu. <laughs> I think we're supposed to be cousins, right? And then I realized, of course, my name is Nayala. She can't say that. <laughs> it's too hard. So everybody called me Tutu. Their friend comes over to the house and goes, Aloha, I'm good, not aloha. That's Hawaii. They go, hi, Tutu, how are you? Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, I'll be everybody's Tutu. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's like your, the whole it's style. It's like everybody's auntie. Right? That's like your everybody's auntie. I remember exactly. the first time somebody called me auntie, I was like, you know, I'm not that old. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, but the kids. I used to be offended when my, my right. little students used to call me auntie. Right. And right. I was only in my 20s. And right. Like, yeah. Why are you calling me auntie? <laughs> They're older than me. But it's a term of endearment. And it it's, a matter of, it's a matter of respect. It is. So much better than I hear you. <laughs> or miss. I don't like the miss thing. It sounds so so yeah. Uh, just, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> speaking anyway. of so yeah, this brings us to the end of part two. Yeah, that time goes so fast. It, yeah, it does. Please join us for part three, where we will spend time talking about the strongest part of the Hawaiian culture, besides great food, great music, great scenery, great weather. On it, the list is long. 
the one that tops it all is the hula. And we'll talk to you about that and share with you on part three. In the meantime, uh, tell us more and aloha! aloha.